Hi, I'm Yujo Wang, and this is Living the Classical Life. when guys are being assholes. <laughs> <laughs> happens in, in life, it's uh, tend to be, um, I guess because music it's just more, I'm reacting to it more intensely, so yeah, like I need it, <laughs> I need this nourishment. <laughs> yeah. It's very different, you know, sometimes I feel so amazing on stage, people are like, oh yeah, it was pretty perfect, but a bit boring. And sometimes when I'm so nervous, like I don't even know what the next note is. And then like I'm, the way I, uh, I'm struggling with how to make this work. And people will be like, that was so brilliant. So I guess the, the, the element of nervousness, of struggling, of uh, searching, feels uncomfortable. I remember telling many acts, he's like, what's your problem with this piece? Sounds good. I was like, I just feel so uncomfortable. He's like, honey, you're paid to be uncomfortable on stage. <laughs> it's like, why? But it could be so nice. But the, the element of that uneasiness, it's probably um, what makes a magic, but it feels like, it feels bad for me, <laughs> yeah. What would surprise people about your life? Hmm? What will surprise people? That I have no boyfriend? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What would I surprise people? Well, um, I like girls. <laughs> that you'd have to practice every day for nine hours. I don't to... have those pieces anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like lots of concertos. Like right now I can do rock three for you. I have, I have this. Yeah, I kind of just uh, code it in my muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And also like playing the piano was, it's so tactile and it's so physical whether you think about it or not. Um, so it's um, it's funny. Like I notice those pieces. If I actually practice, I make it worse because I'm so used to how I should play on stage. And uh, unless if I completely change everything, um, I I don't practice it. I think about it, but I don't go over 
on the keyboard. So, when you're cycling through all those different concertos, how much bringing back do you have to do? I do that in my first rehearsal. <laughs> Shh. I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm actually. I'm scared to practice them because it's a different thing when you practice a piece and learning it, and um, and now I'm actually trying to learn how to relearn a piece. That's a different procedure, and sometimes I don't want to <laughs> relearn or learn, so I just keep it as it is, just not touch it and 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 see what kind of magic I can do on stage, or maybe I don't, but I can't do that for too long, of course, like. After a year or two, the piece just just lost its luster. Even though I think I have it, um, yeah. There's few pieces that uh, like this piece I always play. You know, I think this was a piece when I first went on stage. I played this. You can see that on YouTube. I was like, it was my actually don't go see that. It's <laughs> appalling, but. Because sometimes I think it's better than how I play it now. No. <laughs> That's good music. <laughs> Schubert. I think those are the pieces that when I learned them, it, it is the music, the emotion of the music that catches me so much that I, um, maybe that's how everyone should play. Like instead of learning, um, instead of learning something that you don't, well, okay. It, like those pieces, I feel like I own them. Like, I know what to say, and I could have, come, except I didn't compose them. Um, I don't know how to say it, you know. And it just comes. Uh, it just comes. It just, um, I can just play anytime. Yeah. It's like I can eat anytime. <laughs> Love food. <laughs> what do you want most in life that you don't have? Oh, lots of things. <laughs> a Louis Vuitton shoes. <laughs> um, lots of things. Um, I mean, also lots of maybe feelings or just certain quality of life, uh, certain character I can't have um, because of my the way of my uh, my lifestyle. Like I would love to just be on a vacation for a year or something. Um, but I never tried that because I tried for two weeks in August in New York. I was so bored. I'm like, I need to get back <laughs> to this thing. It's like that's um, that's what made me feel like the life has a meaning. I'm not just idly, you know, um, idly. People say you enjoy life. You need to have more life. But um, but okay, I. The life and, and music and what I do has to be has to be intermixed, has to be together. Yeah. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm not alive, like I'm wasting my time or something. Even though sauna, I love sauna and tanning is great, and reading, yeah. <laughs> movies, <laughs> shopping. <laughs> He's like, okay, shut up. <laughs> The musical world is now mourning the loss of Claudio Abbado. Well, he um, is, he has, he has so many meanings just by being silent. In the rehearsal, he never says a thing. Um, and in a concert, that's an example when the magic happens in a concert. In a rehearsal, it's like, really? <laughs> I'm playing with, Claudio, and it's um, it's very intimidating. Um, I remember because when I recorded the Prokofiev with him, uh, the piece was quite new, and he just asked me to open the Luzerne Festival, 
and I was like, you, why? So I really wanted feedback from him, and he was so, he was so respect to soloist. <laughs> I was, uh, I was not used to that, and um, but I feel like I, I, I have to be responsible for every musical taste um, that I make. And what was really intimidating was I really was trying to ask him, like, please give me some suggestions, advice. I always do that. And um, he was flipping my music for like five minutes. Um, and then he pointed out this, this slow, move, uh, slow variation in the second movement. It's like probably the only slow spot in the concerto. <laughs> One thing was uh, one row in the left hand. Some, some, I can't remember, some row. And he was like, you have to keep that G within the pedal. Can you imagine? <laughs> he heard that. He heard that. <laughs> he heard that and he remembered that. And, and just such little subtlety and detail. And then I'm just like, if you can hear this, what else to do here? <laughs> Back then, I was younger, I was less easy to be intimidated. <laughs> I have my use <laughs> to be against that, that kind of, um, you know, such high quality. And I, I had my energy, I had my um, enthusiasm and passion. So, um, yeah. So, but that was, that comment of that role with pedal was, was pretty scary. <laughs> I remember when we did the, um, the concerto together, I did Rach too, and then we had the Paganini, and he, the only one thing he said that night was like, let's go out and play the encore. And he meant the Paganini as an encore. <laughs> so he's really charming, but with me, it was just a, a silent man. Like, it's um, very veiled character, um, like I said, mysterious. And the only way you can see him with lucidity is, is through playing music with him. And I was so wanting to experience that again. And we probably had the chance in Paris next year. So I was in Italy when that happened. Um, yeah, and I, I just, I was, um, I played this. For him, um, that was something I always played when I played with him. Um, and I just started crying on stage. It was <laughs> pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. But, um, can we talk about something else now? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>